Thank you very much to the organizers for inviting um, myself on behalf of the South African Herbal Science and Medicine Institute to speak to you today. It's a great honor, but it's also very daunting because I'm way out of my comfort zone today and um, I'll do the best that I can. So for those of you who are not familiar with SASHMI, it's a postgraduate institute um, which is actually located on the third floor of this building. And its mission is to scientifically and clinically unlock the value of herbal traditional medicines for better public health. So why is this work important? Well, it's widely estimated that in South Africa, about well, 20% of the population will use traditional oh, uh, Western pharmaceutical medicines regularly. Up to 80% of the population regularly uses traditional indigenous medicines in the form usually of, of plant medicines. So it's important that we know whether these medicines work and whether they're safe. In 2010, SASHMI was successful under the directorship of Professor Quinton Johnson um, on obtaining a grant from the European Union to run a four-year project with the very clever title of Multidisciplinary University Traditional Health Initiative. And its aim is to build sustainable research capacity on plants for better public health across Africa. And you can see that there are three African partners, uh, countries, and uh, three uh, European partners in this initiative. Sashmi's role was to lead the work package in this project focused on clinical trials. And as part of that, we needed to train 100 African investigators in clinical trials methods in herbal medicine. And it was at this point where I was asked to come on board as a project manager for developing workshops where we were going to use the train the trainer model. And you can see we've already successfully run workshops in Cape Town. We were supposed to run one in Mali, but unfortunately the political situation did not allow that to happen. And in 2013 we ran a workshop in Uganda earlier in the year, and there's one due to be run next month in Durban. But part of the project specified that we needed to develop online training modules and provide mentoring for trial protocol development. And I'm going to talk to you today about the online training module development part of this project. So this has been a journey for the last two years, from 2011 to 2013, and I'm going to attempt to explain to you how I went from a situation on the left-hand side with a traditional workshop forum in which I feel very comfortable, both as a student and as a facilitator, to entering through a portal into an area where I feel much less comfortable. <coughs> What you need to know about me, first of all, I'm a public health medicine specialist. I've had several years of exposure as a student in institutions of higher learning and also as a facilitator. And in 2011, these were not things that were part of my general daily life. However, shortly after starting at SASHMI, an email arrived with an invitation to become uh, part of a very innovative workshop looking at ICTs for teaching and learning in higher education. And I'm not sure, I don't recognize anybody immediately from that course in terms of the audience, but certainly some of the facilitators are here. And it was a, a joint project between four institutions in the Cape, Cape Town University, Stellenbosch, UWC, and uh, the Cape Peninsula uh, University of Technology. And it really was extremely stimulating, very well organized, and very intense. I like to think that I can manage my time well, but I was up blogging at half past 11 at night in order to get my assignments in in time. I learned a huge amount at that course and was able to apply it within our project. The first one, as Juliet mentioned earlier, was simple use of Google tools. We've used these application forms for our first workshop and in subsequent workshops. With Farid Khan's help, we were able to use classroom performance <coughs> software in the form of clickers at our first workshop for an assessment tool, and that worked very well. But then we still had to develop our online learning modules. This is where we are at today. 
Um, you can see the logo embedded in the Acumva platform there for our Muti logo, and that is the welcoming opening site of our e-learning module. I learned in the ICT course that you need to plan your theory and principles before you put your e-learning together. And importantly, our plan for this course was initially to have it beyond UWC so that it was going to be postgraduate clinical investigators who could participate in this. But we also saw the benefit for intra-institutional uh, capacity development and for the modules to be used um, for specific relevant uh, departments within the university. Essentially, it is postgraduate learning. We assumed a prior knowledge of epidemiology. We were not setting up a Masters of Public Health program where people were taught basic statistics and epidemiology. This is particularly tailored to people who want to learn about clinical trial methods. We wanted to use a problem-based approach. Readings would be essential. Video footage would be optional. And there was going to be self-assessment with no grading. However, as I'm sure many of you are aware, ICAMFA does allow you to convert assessments into gradable assessments. So this is what it looks like. We have six chapters, um, starting off with Amuti, the learning outcomes for the whole module, and then you can see there's six chapters beyond that, all of those relevant to clinical trial methods, and all the examples used are based on indigenous herbal medicines, African herbal medicines. The way we have organized it is each chapter starts with learning outcomes. Several pages follow, each with separate headings, and each page has a problem, a solution, and a task situation, uh, se a section. And the tasks are divided into readings, videos, and quizzes. So let's have a look what it looks like. <clears throat> if we look at our first chapter on how to ask a clinical trial research question, the users immediately get their learner out outcomes right at the beginning, and we also provide an estimated duration. How long will it take them to work through this particular chapter? And you can see this one will take one to two hours, so it's relatively brief. We provide the readings on the first page, and then the pages which they then need to go into. Each page has a problem, as I said. If you have a look at this, it talks about you and your colleagues have completed a phase three trial of this particular phytomedicine, and you now want to write up your results. How do you do this? We then provide the solution, very brief, but within that solution, we always provide something that they need to do. So they can then click on this URL and go to this particular page which will explain in more detail how a well-written and reported trial article needs to appear. And then lastly, there are the tasks. Because we engage right in the beginning following the ICT course with the center, they suggested that we video our first face-to-face -face workshop in order to use the footage in the online environment. And this has really been absolutely fantastic. We've been able to choose videos which are relevant. It's been lots and lots of watching of them to choose the cuts because we need them to be small and quick. So that will be one of the tasks that users can do. We then have quizzes. And what we've chosen to do is use the show feedback option. As I said, this is not about grading. This is really a self-assessment. So immediately they can see what the right answer is. And when we used the previous platform prior to Sakai, we got a lot of comments from users, particularly in Uganda, that they wanted to get immediate feedback um, and they didn't like having to go all the way through. We also had the problem that if you didn't actually complete the whole session before, you had to um, reapply for it to be opened. So it couldn't be done again and again. Now we can do it again and again. This isn't about testing them. It's about embedding the knowledge. So in terms of the ease of use, because we wanted this to be specific to the Muti project, um, Fagad has developed that um, splash screen where we can direct people to go to the Muti splash screen as opposed to first into the eCanva site. And from there, they can register and come directly into the site. Each embedded link opens in a new window. All the PDFs that we use, all the readings are open access, but they can be downloaded on click or you can go into the course resources and download it before you begin your journey. Um, we've obviously included videos and podcasts, 
and the quiz allows immediate feedback options. In terms of evaluation, um, all the chapters, chapters have been pilot tested on end users to date. We've used our Mooty partners throughout the world to help us with this. We've also asked the workshop facilitators from the first workshop to work through their modules and see if they're happy with the content. Um, we've been fortunate in that um, Sashmi's postgraduate students have um, been tasked with going through the modules and giving us feedback. And then earlier in the year, although it was in the old platform, um, attendants at the Ugandan workshop were able to give us feedback, which was very useful because obviously bandwidth issues are a problem off the university campus. And to date, 40 users have completed the first three chapters. We've only recently finished the last three chapters. So how did we do it? Well, there were challenges and facilitators. In terms of obstacles, I would say up front my own technical ignorance, my fear and suspicion of it as a teaching tool. Um, however, uh, certainly the vision of Juliet Stoltenkamp and her team have helped me work through that. But I was also uncertain to either effectiveness, being someone who's interested in clinical trials and whether things work or not, it's been interesting to read around um, the evaluation of this as an effective learning tool. Um, I think for us, one of the big obstacles was developing everything on the previous platform and then having to learn how a new platform worked, but I think we've transitioned okay. We also had to decide whether we did something locally here within UWC or elsewhere, um, as we were offered the opportunity to develop this on another platform run by the Global Health Trials Network. As it happens, um, our director, Professor Gail Hughes, felt it was very important that we embed this locally and that we can use it sustainably beyond the end of this project. And it means that we have um, the ability to change things and to be in control of it. Fortunately, Global Health Trials has assessed our module and they have linked to it and they actually provide quite a nice overview and summary and encourage people to use it. Um, Lastly, we had this issue about we wanted the Mooty brand, which is obviously bigger than UWC versus UWC. The technology is within UWC, but because of the splash screen, we've been able to brand it as a Mooty initiative and then enter into UWC. I think in terms of facilitating this process, we had an imperative from our funder. We had to deliver this, and there's nothing like being told you have to do something to actually get it done. But I think the vision of the centre has been extremely helpful. We debated a lot about bandwidth issues and whether this was something that was going to be useful in Africa. And I think looking ahead, things have to change, things have to get better. There is going to be better internet um, accessibility. And as Juliet mentioned earlier, there are other ways of doing it. So I think it's great that we've done this. Not everybody's going to be able to access it initially, but it's there for the future. The advanced plan for the video footage was a really great suggestion and it's helped us enormously. And then the perseverance and patience <coughs> of the centre staff. Um, the Sakai platform is definitely looks better um, after I got over the change. I think I do prefer it to the old one. Um, having Faga put our customised splash screen together is fantastic and of course with uh, Professor Hughes's assistance, we've had a fixed timeline and project management for this project, and I think everybody's bought into that. And we had to complete it by the end of August, and I'm proud to say it is, in fact, complete. I'd like to thank several people. Professor Gail Hughes is here in the room, all the Moody facilitators, um, and those team members of the center. Um, I see Farid is not actually on this list, but he was really helpful with the clicker software. And there's somebody missing from that list, and that's Tasneem, who has worked side by side, day and night, in and out, um, just reassuring me, literally holding my hand, um, taking each day as it comes, and being a wonderful support and help. And I think actually taking a content and assisting an individual into translating it into the online environment is a very specific skill and uh, she has it um, in spades. So thank you very much Tasneem and thank you to the Centre for this opportunity.
to uh, one of Caroline team members, Tasneem, and Tasneem then meets with Nandi on every occasion. Like I said, there's somebody with you on the e journey. So what you see there, um, we didn't just dump it to Nandi. We had to convince her. And then she had to have somebody there every time she called and somebody to come to her. So that does help the support. Mm. So thank you to Tasneem. But most of all, thank you uh, to you for having faith. <laughs> and then actually find the tools without just listening to people.